Is jogging or walking better for your weight loss? In this podcast, we're gonna talk about the efficacy of each and all the different variables that make that up. This will help you to make your own decision as to whether you should be spending more time jogging or more time walking. We'll also talk about the safety profile of each, and this will also help you to make the right decisions. Before we get started on all the great information that I have for you, please be sure to like and subscribe so you support the channel and you get more videos like this in the future. All right, that said, let's dive into the efficacy first. So the first thing you wanna be concerned about is a phrase called calories per minute. Now, when you're walking, generally, you're at a more leisurely pace than when you're jogging. There are some exceptions, certainly, if you're rucking or you've got a heavy backpack or a weighted vest and you're walking that way, that could weigh you down enough to actually get your intensity higher than it would be during a light jog, that can happen. Or if you're walking up a steep incline, for example, that could also, raise the number of calories that you're burning per minute to higher than what you would have jogging on flat land. But overall, in general, jogging is a more aggressive activity than most walking. So generally speaking, you're going to think about jogging in terms of being more calories burned per minute and therefore more effective at weight loss on a per minute basis. Now that said, there is the argument that when you're working at more light to moderate intensities, you'll generally have a higher percentage of those calories burned per minute coming from stored fat. So what it often tends to look like is this. Let's say someone goes jogging and they're burning about seven calories per minute, but only two of those seven are coming from stored fat. And then that same person might go for a walk and they might only be burning, say, three calories a minute, but a higher percentage is coming from fat. And so they might end up burning closer to two calories per minute from stored fat. So what you have here is you have two people both burning the same amount of stored fat per minute. The difference though is the other person is also burning more total calories than the person who's walking. So that's what the science can often break down to. And again, it's, it's very complicated because it's not like when you go for a jog or for a walk, you have that same percentage per minute or the same calories burned per minute. It's gonna ebb and flow. You've got the warm up at the beginning and the cool down at the end that are lighter and you're gonna have pockets where intensities are coming up and down. So it's not like you just get a static number as you go. But in general, the way to look at this is when you're jogging, most people are gonna be able to burn more total calories per minute, and usually at least as much or even more body fat than the person who's walking. That's generally the way you look at it. And again, there's exceptions there because if you're walking in a way that's particularly vigorous, or if your jog is almost a walk, then you might see the opposite results. So that's how you wanna look at efficacy. And that's how you wanna think about time management in terms of burning more body fat in a shorter amount of time. So please comment down below if you have questions about that or feel free to reach out to me if you wanna discuss things on a more personalized level. So now let's move on to safety profile. Okay, easily walking is almost always going to be a safer choice than jogging. Jogging, you have more impact forces that are moving up through your body. In some cases, those impact forces can actually be really good for you. They can help to, to stimulate more cartilage growth and such. But very often, and especially for beginners, it is gonna be more devastating. That pounding and getting the biomechanics just right in terms of your knee placement, your pelvic alignment, your upper body. You know, as you get more and more fatigued, again, especially for beginners, you're gonna be more and more likely to injure yourself on a jog than you are in a walk. So from a safety perspective, if someone's a beginner, I generally tell them I just want them walking initially and then doing just little tiny bursts of jogging, just small periods of time where they're very unlikely to lose focus and therefore get an injury. Now, if you are a little bit more advanced and if you do have good biomechanics, jogging can be more and more beneficial because again, you're getting the benefits of burning more calories per minute and you're gonna be less likely to injure yourself if you have better musculature and better biomechanics. Now, what I'd suggest is if you do get into jogging, you're almost certainly gonna need at least a little bit of stretching afterward, preferably static stretching. The reason for that is there's certain muscles that when you're jogging as opposed to walking, they get a lot more worked. Uh, your hip flexors, for example, uh, the, the quadriceps as well, and even the calves are gonna go through more work during a jog than they generally will during a walk. And so what can happen here in terms of safety is those muscles often get very tight and restrictive, especially if you're jogging very, very regularly, like more than four days a week. And so if you don't stop and static stretch at the end, there's a good chance those muscles are gonna stay 
more locked up and more tight. And that's going to start impeding your biomechanics in the future. And not to mention causing more joint distress and, uh, and all kinds of disruptions to your physicality. Now, on a final note about safety profile, this is going to apply to both jogging and walking in terms of weight loss. One of the best things you can do to make either activity a lot safer is to have the right strength training program. Not only is the strength training program going to help your weight loss as well, it's going to boost your metabolism and give a lot more ability for your body to shed excess body fat, but it's going to make any activity safer because when you've got healthy, active muscle and better muscle balance throughout your body, chances of injury are a lot less and more forces get into the muscles where force can safely go as opposed to getting into the joints and potentially damaging them. So that's the same argument for both jogging and walking and frankly, any kind of cardiovascular activity. I hope this video has been helpful, everybody. If it has been, please be sure to like and subscribe. I wanna get more videos like this to you in the future. And of course, you can contact me down below or comment if you have questions or feedback or would like to get my help uh, individually. I look forward to your health and wellness success.